Knit and Kitten podcast number 46. My name is Mallory, otherwise known as Just a Dose of Love all around the internet. So you can find me on Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, and Ravelry under Just a Dose of Love, though I am most active on Instagram. If you're a new viewer, this is a video podcast about knitting and crafts and kind of whatever else I happen to be making at the time. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming to join me today. I know it has been uh, quite a while since the last podcast, and the reason for that was that I basically renovated my entire basement suite, and that took all of my time uh, for months. <laughs> months and months. Uh, so what all, I I'm just going to tell you what all, what all we did down there. So all of the light fixtures were changed. Every single surface other than the floors was painted. Every single surface. And that was all me. And that took like 120 hours probably of straight painting. So my life was painting for months. Um, the floors were changed out in the kitchen, the bathroom, the front entryway, the living room rug was replaced, the baseboards were all changed out, uh, a window was fixed, a bathroom fan was put in, all the grill covers were replaced, a cold air return was installed, so uh, yeah, like a ton of work. I think it looks fantastic down there now, which of course I have a renter down there now, so I'm never going to see it again. But <laughs> you know what? At least it looks nice for him. So I'm really super, super pleased about that. Um, but unfortunately, it did take basically all of my free time from the beginning of June until the end of August. So I've done not a ton of knitting um, and I haven't really done a whole lot of other crafty things too so I've just been waiting to kind of amalgamate accumulate get more knitting content to record about so here we are and this is the first podcast of October which is my favorite month so happy fall everyone uh, with all of that out of the way I am going to jump into what is currently on my needles. So, this is a big one. This, of course, out of the knitting that I have done, this is what has taken up the majority of my knitting time. And it is because it is my first fingering weight sweater. And it's also my first colorwork project. And I am so excited. I am so stoked with how it is looking. I am a little concerned that it is not going to fit, but that is okay because if it doesn't, I have other family members who are smaller than I am. So that'll be just fine. It'll have a lovely home wherever it ends up. Hopefully with me. If it's not with me, that's okay too. So without further ado, this is the Peperomia sweater pattern. It's by Woolen Pine. And oh, let's see if I can do this without losing any stitches. Oh god, nope. Already lost a couple. One, two, three. Only three? Only three. Okay. Here it is. Isn't that just gorgeous? Oh I I fell in love with this pattern before they, they released it and I was seeing it on their Instagrams. Oh yeah, I just love it. I love it so much. And look at how tiny those little stitches are. So this pattern does call for a larger needle size, but I know that I knit pretty loose. So in order for me to get gauge, I am knitting this with 2.5 millimeter slash US 1.5 size um, circular needles and I think these are on 90 centimeter circulars which works out to approximately 31 inches there it is and this is now to almost the underarm I guess I should tell you what kind of yarn this is this is knit picks yarn both of them are they're both Hawth the Hawthorne fingering base this lovely dark purple 
Hmm. I actually don't know which color is which. Ah! I'm pretty sure the dark purple is the... You know what? Actually, let me just double check. Okay, should have gone with my gut. <laughs> this is the Ashland Tonal, which is a hand-painted, and it is an 80-20 superwash merino. Um, that's a lie. It's a superwash fine highland wool and a polyamide, polyamide? polyamide blend. So that's what this is. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous dark purples. Oh yeah, you can really see the, the tonal the tonal purples in there. And the pink, this lovely pink here, is the Berlin game. Again, it's an 80-20 superwash fine highland wool and a polyamide blend. It's just so pretty. It's mostly pinks, but you can see little specks of orange in there too, and like little hints of some blues and some greens. And I thought that they were absolutely perfect together for this sweater. And I am so glad with how it turned out because I absolutely think I'm right. There it is. So this is, this is spectacular. <clears throat> I have to say though, color work knitting, it's growing on me, but learning how to hold my yarn, one yarn on one hand each, uh, and you knit, <laughs> knit <laughs> with both hands, um, that took a long time. So this is a good project for that. I think if I had started with mittens like I had originally intended, the tension would have been super wonky. As it is, we can see, how do I show you this without sending yarn flying? You can see my floats in the back. I think they look pretty darn good. The front, it's the back. Yeah. I don't actually know what I'm supposed to be looking for, but I think this looks really nice. I, I do hope that once I block it, it will open up a little bit and then it'll fit really well. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right, so that's been my biggest project on the go lately. I have also been working on a pair of vanilla socks and that's right here. Oh my goodness, dropping everything. Okay, so it's just a sock tube right now. I did drop a couple stitches while I was pulling it over here for my, my, my stash of things to show you. So here it is. Now this is made up on, knit up on Drops Yarn. It is the Fable print base and it's a color number. It's um, number 542. And all of this pattern that's going on, this is all because of the way that the yarn is dyed. So it's kind of like a self-striping yarn, so it's more like a self-patterning yarn. And I think it's just really, really cool. So yeah, there it is. This is going to be a pretty, <laughs> a pretty big sock. <clears throat> I think I probably have another well, six inches probably to knit before I will start on the toe and then cut the heels in. So I'm going to do an afterthought heel on it, which is typically my preferred preferred method when I'm doing any, any socks, really. I don't particularly like um, the heel gusset just because I, mostly because I'm just not very well acquainted with it. But anyways, afterthought heel, sock tube, love it. Very nice and green. And well, obviously I have a second ball of yarn for the second sock. And these needles, again, it's 2.5 millimeter slash US 1.5, and they are nine inch circulars and they are Chiagos. They may be my first set of Chiagos actually. Okay, with all that out of the way, I'm gonna take a quick drink of this delicious, kombucha that I picked up today at the farmer's market. It is a, a local, local com, kombuchery. I don't know if that's the correct lingo. Um, yeah, brewed with care in Edmonton. Very cool. And it's so good. It is so delicious. So it's 
Mobu Kombucha, and it's the Pomegranate Cherry, and it is just phenomenal. Love it. Would absolutely recommend if uh, you were a kombucha type of person. <clears throat> what is off my needles? Where did this hat go? I feel so disorganized. Oh my goodness. You wouldn't know it, but I actually have set everything out here. Found the hat. Okay, I was working on a bit of a passion project uh, for years and years and years. I have wanted to make a hat and sock pattern actually that looks a little bit like foxes. And I don't think I quite, quite got it with this hat pattern, so I'll have to try again. But I, I am still pretty happy with how it turned out. So I think his head just needs to be a little smaller. The thought was that this is the muzzle and the eyes, you know, foxes kind of have the white above their eyes and the ears. So that would be it. And I think I just need to cut the, make the nose smaller and maybe not do the second portion here. So like it kind of looks like a flower, I guess. <laughs> if you aren't thinking fox. Or maybe I could go in with a tapestry needle and like some black and white yarn and stitch in some of the details. Maybe that would do it. I don't know if I'm gonna get what I want to get with a solid color, but actually the tapestry needle idea is a, a good idea, and I think I'm gonna try that. So this was knit up on Anthem, so it's Cascade Yarn, it is their Anthem base, which I, if, you, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you know that I love this yarn. It is 100% worst, um, 100% worsted, it is 100% worsted weight, uh, but it's 100% acrylic yarn, which means it is completely washable, and it just feels so nice when it's knit up. It's thick, it's squishy, you can throw it in the washing machine, you can give it to someone without having to worry about them accidentally throwing it through the wash and it getting all felted and ruined forever. And I love this yarn. I've made up at least two sweaters with it. This was actually the leftover of one of the sweaters that I knit up with, with this. And this is the burnt orange colorway, which is also color number 39. And yeah, so there it is. This is for my mother. She loves foxes. I think they might be her spirit animal. So this will make its way to her probably after, no, you know what, for Christmas. Let's just make it easy, no deadlines other than Christmas. And that is months away, we're good. So I'm gonna do the little details. I will show you what it looks like when it's done. And hopefully, hopefully it looks good or like a fox um, for, for, for foxes. And, yeah, I'll show you how it looks when it's done. Fingers crossed. Unless you have a better idea, then please let me know. Beautiful. So, upcoming and current items of note. There are no current items of note, um, but upcoming, I will be releasing my Unomia hat pattern. So that's this one here, on the 29th of October, so the end of the month. Please keep your eye out for that if you would like to. I I really love this hat pattern. It's it is one of the hats that I had made up for my coworkers. Let me let me rewind. You've probably heard this story before, but a couple of years ago I decided to create a hat pattern and knit a hat for each of the ladies that I work with in the office. So I think it was five five at the time and this was one of them. So I have dubbed this my goddess hat collection because um, you're just um, very strong, powerful women um, that I've made these hats for and I really wanted to reflect that in the hat patterns and the naming and just kind of all of it. So this is the You Know Me A Hat pattern. She's the goddess of kind of like the law and that kind of thing. Um, so 
I'll do up a better write-up when I have it in front of me. <laughs> it's been a little bit, so I'll have to reread on, on that, but here it is. So it's got kind of, it either could look like a, a Christmas tree, if you think it looks like a Christmas tree. I thought it kind of looks like fishtails. Regardless, I really love this. And up at the top, it goes into little cables and slip stitches. And I just love how this whole hat comes together. It is a, a slouchy hat, um, which is my preferred style of hat. And the reason for that is because I have a lot of hair and I don't have a hair dryer. I don't like to dry my hair before I go out in the winter if I've just showered. So in order for my hair not to freeze when I go outside, I like to have a hat that can hold all my hair. So this is, this is a slouchy hat. The lady that I had originally made the hat for, she also has a lot of hair. <laughs> so yeah, that was the reason behind that. And if anyone wants to see what the crown looks like, where it all gathers together, that is what it looks like. So yes, keep your eyes up for that. It'll be coming out at the end of the month. All right, and do I have some stash enhancement to show you. I had gone to Ontario at the beginning of September, and of course while I was there I wanted to do a yarn store, a yarn store tour um, and just grab some local dyed yarn and see the local yarn stores. So there was two that I got to stop at and I'll just show you some of the, all, the, all of the yarns actually <laughs> that I bought while I was there. So I definitely spent my entire fun money budget on yarn and I am so okay with that because I'm going to make such pretty things. So the first thing was this Fable yarn, which I'd shown you already with the, the sock. So this is the second ball. I did pick up two so they could be a matching set. Again, it's the drops on their Fable print, color number 542, and it's a 7525 super wash mole and polyamide blend. So it's got light greens, dark greens, navy blue, just lots of earthy tones, whites, and I think it all looks so nice knitted together in that sock, how it comes together. I, I am like, my mind is blown when I started seeing how that was knitting up. I absolutely love it, and I can't wait to see what the finished sock looks like. So that was my first bit of stash enhancement. I got another set of sock yarn. Actually, a lot of this is sock yarn. And um, all of the stuff in this label is on, on the label is in another language. So I'm sure my punctuation, punctuation, oh my goodness, where my, where's my head? My pronunciation, pronunciation is going to be awful. So I'm sorry. So here is the second set of yarn, sock yarn. It's Sandis Garn on the Sisu base. Sisu? It's color number 4622 uh, four, and it is an 80-20 wool and nylon blend and it is just so lovely and pink. Isn't that cute? It's just such a soft, soft pink. I don't even know what I'm going to knit up with this yet. Obviously socks, but which sock pattern? I don't know. Maybe it'll be a Valentine's sock pattern. That would be perfect. And I think the color is pink enough, like off-white enough that uh, the stitch definition will show up and any sort of pattern that's in there, if it's textured or cables, will just show up really, really beautifully because of the, the color of this yarn. So that was my second soon-to-be pair of socks, someday-to-be pair of socks. <laughs> I keep running across this meme online where it's like, I'm convinced that buying yarn and using yarn are two separate hobbies, and I really think they are. Because my yarn stash, it's big. <sighs> it's a it's big and will I ever get through all of it? 
maybe if they stop making yarn. Yeah, probably only then. <laughs> or I run out of money. Yeah. I really want to I really want to get through my stash. Do I think I will? Oh, that's really hard to say. That's okay though. I really like the pretty yarns. Anyways, I am getting way off track. So the third one is Riverside Studio on the Super Sock base. It is the teal colorway and this was dyed in Wakefield, Quebec. So that's pretty cool. And I just really, really loved the colors. So obviously it's all different variations of teal, very tonal teal, if you will. And I just, oh, this is going to be such a pretty set of socks. I will probably keep them for myself. Just look at that. It looks like water. What I would expect the ocean to look like. You know, an ideal ocean. Look, it's just so pretty. <clears throat> so that is that one. Um, 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. Not sure if I said that, but it'll be a lovely pair of socks. Okay, here's another one that is in another language. So apologies again. Shaft Pat? Maybe? So it is the Wanderlust base. It is color 9851 and it's a 70 7525 superwash wool and polymade blend. And this, I believe, will be a self-striping just like the drops is. So it's got lots of fun colors in it. It's got light blues and some teals and pinks and yellow. And I can't wait to see how it turns how it knits up because I can't even fathom what it's going to look like while it is balled up like this. Yeah. That'll probably be a Christmas set of socks. Alright. The next one, I know, I know, I bought a lot of yarn. Uh, the next one is Malabrigo, which is one of my favorite yarn dyed brands. I just think they're the softest and the squishiest, and I absolutely love all of the yarn that I have knit with. I've knit with some fingering weight, single ply, I've knit with a lot of the Malabrigo Rios. I've never knit with this base, which is Mecca, Mecca, and it is color 051. Ba? Not sure. But it is this gorgeous gorgeous dark green tonal uh it's like a i don't know it's so dark that it almost looks black see when it's far away from the light it almost looks black but then when i bring it close you can really see the greens so i think this is going to be too dark for any sort of pattern it's going to be a hat so it maybe i'll stick with something textured or twisted stitches I don't know and here it is and I it is just just gorgeous I'm really excited to knit this up it is a single ply and it is just so so soft it is going to be a really really nice hat okay and last but not least is I bought some of the earth yarn it is on their merino sock base here it is. It is color number 2009 and it is an 8020 Superwash Merino nylon blend. And look at it! It is just so freaking bright! Oh, like in this light, it almost looks like it's under UV light. It's just so neon. Oh, it is so pretty. This is definitely going to be a pair of socks for me. I just can't get over how it looks in this light. Absolutely stunning. Okay. And that is it for my stash enhancement. 
other than uh, just these needles here, these Chiago needles. I had actually bought those in Ontario as well because I was getting ready for the plane ride home and I had just finished up the color work on my Peperomia sweater and I just was not mentally ready to start the decrease for the sleeves and the neck and that shaping. I just was not ready so I got some needles so that I could start a vanilla sock and just not think about it. And I made some really good headway on that plane ride actually. So it went really well. I think that was a good choice. All right. And I think that is about it. So for how much content there was, this is actually kind of a short podcast, all things considered. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so glad to be back and um, chatting with you guys again about, about all of the wonders and joys of making things. So with that, I am going to say goodbye. I hope you stay safe and happy and healthy and warm, and I will talk to you again soon.